I think of myself as a writer. I've written a couple of novels and short stories, and I've been doing some form of creative writing for about six years at this point. I've picked up a lot of tips and tools to make my stories more interesting, and one of the most basic structures I use in nearly everything I write is the narrative arc. Generally speaking, characters should change from the beginning of the story to the end, and important moments in that journey are what go in between. So when I decided to take a look at Ironsworn, a low magic fantasy game by Sean Tompkin, I found myself a little torn by one of the game's central mechanics. In Ironsworn, your character makes iron vows, solemn promises to complete a quest of some kind, throughout their life. Ironsworn's vow system is an interesting way to set up character motivations and complicate them, but it's not set up to mesh with the kinds of narrative structures I'm used to. Let's take a look at these vows and see why I'm struggling with these rules. When you first build a character in Ironsworn, you're told that in this setting, vows are sacred, and that by touching a piece of iron and promising to uphold it, you're making a serious oath. Abandoning this duty is the worst thing that can happen to you. You make two of these promises at character creation, setting the tone for how your Iron Sworn will begin their quest. As a game drawing from the Powered by the Apocalypse system, Iron Sworn relies on a set of moves to drive its action. As such, when your character touches iron and makes a solemn oath to accomplish a quest, you employ the Swear an Iron Vow move, which lays out the next step to accomplishing the task, as well as allows you to add it to your character sheet. Vows are ranked at five tiers, from troublesome to epic, which tell the player roughly how long it will take to complete the quest. You're given 10 blank boxes to fill, and whenever you make progress towards advancing, you mark a number of those boxes corresponding with how hard your quest is. Troublesome quests can be filled three boxes at a time, whereas epic quests can only be filled one quarter box at a time, which really makes players feel the scale of how challenging their task would be. Once you fill up the progress track to your satisfaction, you make the fulfill your vow move, and if you succeed in your role, you gain experience and the quest is finished. That's a very basic rundown of how Iron Sworn is supposed to be played. You accumulate quests, make progress toward them, and gain experience when you finish. From a writing perspective, I really like vows as a structure for character motivations. Kurt Vonnegut has a quote about motivations that is kind of my north star when it comes to figuring out stories. Every character should want something, even if it's only a glass of water. It's a simple aphorism, but it gets at the heart of good storytelling, which is that a character needs a reason to go and make the story happen. In my opinion, it's especially fun if that character's desire causes them to make bad choices and act stupidly, because that can cascade into further complications. A similar bit of writing advice that gets tossed around a lot is the idea that when you're introducing a character, you should have them either kick a dog or save a cat. Not literally, of course, but in order to tell the audience how you want them to feel about a character, to give them something either to root for or against, it's useful to set up a scene showing them doing something mean or nice. Writers are often thinking about how to quickly and efficiently convey concepts to their audience, and these sort of setup scenes are an easy shortcut. So when you make a character in Iron Sworn, I really like that you start with two vows that your character considers the most important things in their life. The first vow, your background vow, is massive in scope, ranked at extreme or epic difficulty. This is your character's A plot, the thing they'll spend the majority of your time playing them trying to achieve. The game example is defeating your former clan, a force now so powerful you'll need to amass an army to even challenge them. Your second vow is literally described as your inciting incident, because it's the one that pushes you out of your normal rhythm and onto the path that'll lead towards your background quest. Tomkin recommends this incident be personal, persistent, time-sensitive, and relevant to your allies, all of which are great suggestions to give this quest urgency, forcing you to act now. To tie back in to save the cat, the details of these two quests can help flesh out what your character is like, and how their journey might shape them. A character whose background motivation is destroy the clan that wronged me is pretty sympathetic, but definitely has the possibility of letting their anger push away anyone who tries to help them. By contrast, a character whose inciting incident is steal the sword of the richest chief in the Ironlands could be a bit of a scoundrel, drawn into a scheme much bigger than they realize. Narratively, this two-pronged system of motivations is very useful. You have your background, number one, Disney protagonist I want quest, and you have your more immediate, hey, this needs to get resolved ASAP quest. Your character has both short and long-term reasons to go do dangerous stuff, which is really important to establish at the beginning of a story, because those desires will carry them along until the story takes a turn. Great. So if it's all so good for setting up characters and stories, then what's my problem with all this? Let's talk about Ironsworn's resolution mechanics. 
Like many games iterating on the PBTA engine, Ironsworn has three tiers of die result. Strong hit, weak hit, and miss. Strong hits are a success without reservation, weak hits are a success that is either blunted or costly, and misses are failures that can result in serious complications. To determine whether an action's result falls into one of these categories, players roll two 10-sided challenge die and one six-sided action die. The action die is modified by a character's stats and additional bonuses, and is then compared to the results of the challenge die. If your action die's result is greater than both challenge dice, you get a strong hit. If it's greater than only one challenge die, it's weak, and if it's lesser than both challenge dice, it's a miss. Where this gets my goat is where vows are involved. To fill up your vows progress, you've been taking moves and marking progress boxes to show how much further on your journey you need to go before your quest is complete. What's different about fulfilling your vow is that you don't need to roll your d6 action die, but instead roll those 2d10 challenge dice and compare them to the amount of progress boxes you've completely filled on your journey. Based on the rank of how difficult your quest is, progress boxes fill at varying speeds. Easy quests can be filled with a couple successes, whereas epic quests need 40 wins to get all 10 boxes filled. To be reductive, this means that even with relatively simple quests, fulfilling a vow is hard. It takes a lot of in-game investment and time to get to the point where you can attempt to fulfill your vow. Because there is every chance you can roll a weak hit or even a miss when fulfilling your vow, players are incentivized to max out their progress track, undertaking potentially dozens of quests to get to that maximum of 10 progress boxes. You can always attempt the fulfill your vow move before you max out your progress boxes, and in fact, the game encourages you to do so. But on a purely mechanical level, you should take extra steps and lengthen your journey in order to get those progress boxes filled, because it'll make that much more of a difference when you finally roll those dice. As a writer, I find that frustrating. What if your character reaches a pivotal moment, but you realize you've only got four of a possible ten progress boxes finished? The game wants you to follow the fiction of the story and attempt to finish your quest, but you as a player will know that this is not an optimal choice. And what's worse, in my opinion, is the fact that you can get a weak hit on one of these rolls, suddenly expanding the scope of your story when it might have already come to a satisfying conclusion. You still succeed, but all is not well. I've seen too many stories get sequels, too many corporations endlessly extend franchises. I fundamentally believe that good stories end, that characters' arcs should not meander. Iron Sword's mechanics incentivize either constantly lengthening a narrative for the sake of a good role, or risk a quest continuing in perpetuity. But as a player and tabletop enthusiast, I kind of get it. Ironsworn sets out from the very beginning by telling you your story will be one of blood and tears. This world is not nice, and does not often result in clean, perfect endings. You are much more likely to die in the mud than finish your epic quest. That threat of failure is what makes the rare victory so compelling. I've talked in previous videos about my preference for mixed successes and die resolution, because they're more narratively interesting than just success or failure. Iron Sword's mechanics are an extension of that. In theory, it's kind of nice to know there's one more adventure on the horizon, giving you the option to spend more time with a character if you so choose. That's the difference between stories in books and stories in games. Game stories are produced by their rules, not by a single author with total narrative control. Even when Iron Sworn's rules throw you a curveball, upsetting what you may have thought was the perfect resolution to your character's quest, the world of the game had already set the expectation that this was always a possibility. Even though I want my stories to end, for my character's arcs to hit that perfect three-act structure, that's just not the way it works out in the Ironlands. Ironsworn's mechanics support the messy, difficult, and tough stories of the people in its setting. As long as you understand that going in, you'll have plenty of chances to make good on your vows, or die trying. Hey everybody, thank you for watching. I really appreciate everybody who takes the time to uh, get to the end of these videos and see what I'm saying about tabletop games. Um, and, you know, for the record, I think Iron Sworn's great, and it's not for me, but um, this should in no way be read as a criticism of the game overall. It's more of a personal read, so um, be cool. Uh, if you want to find more of my work, I'm at AaronSXL on Twitter, uh, but my main site is aavoid.com, where I talk about games, writing, and health policy sometimes. I also do two podcasts. The first is at Mortified Pod, where me and my friend Layla do critical media analysis. We are recently uh, finishing up the Fast 10 uh, movie, so um, if you want us to talk about um, how hot Michelle Rodriguez is, uh, check that out. 
Um, and we also do another podcast that's at The Bible Boys, um, where me and my friends Michael and Josh uh, talk about Christian media and either uh, praise or condemn it. We are finishing up our History Channel miniseries and are going to return to doing some more weird, messed up stuff. <laughs> so um, if, if weird Christian media is interesting to you, please check that out. Um, thank you, as always, for watching. I hope to have another video out uh, in, in a couple weeks. Uh, until then, see ya.